This is part two of the 7.3 section volume using the method. So we're going to go ahead and start with our examples. Example one does specifically say use shell method to find the volume of the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by this graph and the x axis between the interval zero to one. So I do know my bounds already. About the y axis. Um, well, maybe I have, I should have my bounds. So let's graph this and see what that looks like. I am only looking at from zero to one. So if I plug in zero here, I get zero. If I plug in one there, I also get zero. What about if I plug in 0.5? I get 3.75. So about here. So I've got a picture there. Um, I may want to fix my units there so it could be a little bit better. I think I'll make this 0.5. So this will be 0.25, which means that will probably be up there just because it's a little too small for me and I really want to have a good visual as to what's going on. So it will look like this, which is like part of the curve of the cube. Um, now, between this and my x-axis, so this is the region that they're talking about, and the I'm revolving about the y-axis. So I'm actually revolving around this, okay? Now, since my line of revolution is vertical and I am talking about the shell method, that means that my rectangles should also be vertical, okay? So if I wanna set this up, I have v equal to two pi and I am doing it with respect to X because of my vertical rectangle. And I'm going to have H of X, which is gonna be this height. Now the height is found with this function. So if H of X is actually gonna be X minus X cubed. Row of X is going to be this measurement here. Now notice that the region is on the right and this value, the line is on the left. What is the equation of this line? The equation of the y-axis is actually x equal to zero, okay? So we're gonna take x to represent the region on the right minus this value for the line of revolution, which is zero. Now, if I simplify that using my algebra. This is just x, and I'm gonna go ahead and distribute that x. Then if I integrate, and then evaluate, oh, I forgot to put bounds. We're going from zero to one. That's important. And then let's evaluate this. So we get one third minus one fifth minus a big fat zero. So we get two pi times two over 15, which means we end up with four pi over 15. This is the volume of this solid of revolution once it creates that entire, basically looks like an egg after um, all the revolving has taken place. Okay, let's move on to example two. So example two says use the shell method to find the solid formed by revolving the region bounded by the graph of x equals e to the negative y squared and the y axis between zero, where y is between zero and one about the x axis. Now this one's gonna be a little bit harder for me to um, graph. So I am going to, um, I think they give you the graph on this one actually. And it was my mistake for not drawing it. But the graph does look something like this. Let 
this was one of the ones where they they do in fact give you the region okay so this is the graph that they give you and this is the graph of x equals e to the negative y squared and they give me between 0 and 1 for y and I am revolving about the x-axis okay so this time they've given me a horizontal line of revolution and I am using the shell method which means my rectangle needs to be parallel to that which means that my rectangle will also have to be horizontal and consequently that means I do have to take this integral with respect to y. So my volume is going to be, oops, I forgot the 2 pi, 2 pi, and then it's going to be with dy. Now my height, since it hits all the way down here, is just going to be this function. So e to the negative y squared. Then my um, row function is going to be notice that the region is on top of the line of revolution so I'm going to use a y to represent the region minus the value here well the equation of the x-axis is y equals zero so that value is just a zero so we end up having to integrate I forgot to put my bounds y value from zero to one I think I want to use u substitution. So then du would have to be negative 2y dy. And I only have the y dy. I could bring this 2 in and then have the 2 as well, but I am still missing the negative. So in order for me to put a negative in, I also have to take a negative out. So what this means is I'm going to have negative pi and then negative 2y e to the negative y squared dy. And if I use the substitution, this becomes, um, these parts become the du, and this becomes e to the u. And the integral of e to the u is just e to the u. But I can't quite plug in the 1 and the 0 because this 1 and the 0 are y values, and this is not a y, it's a u. So I do have to back substitute and put back in my negative y squared. Then I can evaluate at y value 0 to 1. So we get e to the negative 1 squared, which is e to the negative 1, minus e to the negative 0, or just e to the 0. So we get negative pi over 1 over e minus 1. Remember that a negative exponent means 1 over e. And anything raised to the power 0 is 1. So if I put this in my calculator, let's see what we get. So on negative pi, oops, negative pi times um, 1 over, where's my e? There it is minus 1 and I get it's approximately 1.98586 that's still rounding but I need to round it to put it in my computer it says round your answer to three decimal places to three that 8 is going to make it go up so it's going to be 1.986 that you type inside of WebAssign.